Hi, welcome back to the channel. Uh, thank you everybody so far for the amazing support you've shown me. Um, really appreciate it. Um, yeah, it's been great. Thank you very much. Uh, so I thought I'd change the format of the videos a little bit and do a bit of an introduction. And yeah, welcome to the uh, casual painter. I am in some pyjamas because, you know, it's casual. They're Christmas pyjamas as well, which is seasonal in spring. But yeah, thank you very much. So we are painting up some Chaos Knights. Um, recently did a, a poll and two thirds of the people wanted uh, Chaos Knights. And when I say two thirds, it was two out of three people. So yeah, thank you very much for them two people. So yeah, let's get into it. So here we have our five Chaos Knights, all primed, base coated, uh, primed, primed and based. Uh, ready to go. So we are going to start with the champion because why not? We'll move these to the side. Um, we're going to start with a base coat of Iron Warriors on the armor panels. We're going to go do all the metal, um, not the gold bits, but all the metal trims, uh, the chainmail, sorry, the armor plates on the, the horse and on our guy riding it i don't know uh yeah we'll do the weapons as well yeah so that is going to be the start <clears throat> oh i think we've got a floppy lid i think no i think we're okay there we are starting to spill it already Good start. Let it run in a little bit. But we're just going to go over all the metallic bits with a nice coat of Iron Warriors. Try and be neat as possible. If it's a bit too thick like that, then we'll just move it around. Get on the chainmail. All of your armor panels. This is going to be a messy phase because my plan is to get this bit done first because I'm going to dry brush it afterwards. Focus, there we go. So I'm not too worried if it's a bit messy. It's just going to be the way it is. Like we saw with the uh, previous things we're going to dry it but we're just going to base coat this up at the minute get over everything little trinkets like this as well try and avoid that trinket there I'm not sure what that is at the minute but we'll figure it out we've got that bit there we got this panel here that we're going to get this chain mail uh, you got this part of the panel up here as well. I'm gonna get. Am I gonna get? Yeah, I'm gonna get that bit as well. A bit of yeah, that bit there. Uh, we're gonna get. Oh, that's loads on my paintbrush there, isn't it? <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, right, what else are we going to get? We're going to get the shield. We're not going to get the skull. We're going to get all the flat parts of the shield. Again, avoiding that the best we can. Somewhere like that. We've got our knight's armour. So we got this knee pad. And 
Now, previously, back in Warhammer Fantasy, I think it was 8th edition, wasn't it? Yeah, 8th edition before it all blew up. Um, Chaos Knights was some of the best cavalry going in the game. I mean, yeah, Demigriffs were pretty good. I think they're called Demigriffs, I can't really remember. But the Empire, Griffin, Knights, whatever they were called, they were pretty good. Arguably one of the best ones. But Chaos Knights held that title for a very long time. Don't know if it's still true now, but I'd like to think it is. Definitely with some of the coolest looking knights models. Get all these bits, get in there. Get his helmet. Chain links. Everything. So go over all the bits that you want in silver. Um, get it all base coated up with iron hand steel. So we have all of our silver details hopefully blocked in. Uh, I've got the back of the shield as well. I don't know if you can see that very well. There we go, focus a bit. Got the back of the shield, got the um, the horseshoes, got the inside of the uh, male skirt just there. Um, yeah, gone over. I've not gone over like rings. Um, belt buckles and stuff like that, where they're not part of armour already. So that is one bit that I haven't done, because they, they just get picked out later on anyway. But what we are going to do now is take some of the Pro Acryl, uh, what's it called? Rich Gold. Can we see that? Rich Gold. And we're going to pick out the trim. This is going to be another long... Um, Step, another long step because there's, there's lots of trim, there's lots of bits that we need to pick out. But this is the next step. So I guess we this on our pallet. Get some. Get this going. And go around all. Hmm, there is a lot of trim. Although not as much as uh, there was on the Chosen, so I'm going to get this. This gold is very similar to Retributor Armour. So if you don't have this colour, don't worry about it. Just use use the gold that you have got. Although I do quite like this gold. Take your time with this bit because we need it um, to be nice and neat. Avoiding the silver bits as much as possible. I mean, if you do spill over, then just touch back up with your, your silver colour like that. I just. Shh. Yeah. Just nice and neat. Lock that collar in. Uh, it goes under there as well. Of course it does. All oh, nice and difficult. I was contemplating with these whether I should leave the rider off or not. But the way they assemble, half the rider's already moulded onto the horse anyway, so it doesn't really make sense to do it that way. In my mind. Uh, so all the, the horse will get... Uh, this bit on the shield. No, it doesn't go around there, it just comes around this side. <clears throat> I 
Uh, yeah, that'll be on the shield. We're what about our oh, knight? Has he got much in the way of? See, so he hasn't got much in the way of trim on his armor, which is good because it saves me pain in it. So yeah, we're just going to go there on the horse then, because that looks like where most of the trim is. Um, yeah, might pick a, a couple of bits on him. I've missed a couple of bits of silver, but we'll uh, worry about that in a minute. But yeah, go around, pick out all the bits that you want gold. Yours might look slightly different to mine, because I've got a couple of variant builds as well. But take your time, being as neat as possible. all a jumbled mess hmm. yeah I'm gonna paint this bit gold this bit's gonna be gold as well this bit's gonna be gold this bit's gonna be gold uh, I'm gonna leave the head as a skull because I think that'll look quite cool um yeah pick out all the bits that you can in gold oh focus there we go so yeah pick out all the bits that you want in gold and get them a nice solid base coat on them Uh, right now that is the majority of the gold trim done I do believe all the bits that I can pick out um, what I'm going to do now I have gone round with what color uh, gray seer just to pick out the base it's the very same color as uh, the uh, color forge one uh, but what I'm going to do now is take some contrast flesh terrors red and I'm going to go over the cloth so I'm going to go get hit the cape and I'm going to hit this cloth draped over the the back of the, um, the horse. Try not to shake the camera right where as I do it. <clears throat> Use slightly bigger brush for this one. Well, say slightly. Uh, that was a size. What size is that? That's a size one that I was using. This is a size three. So, get some of that. I'm gonna start down here out of the way. Being very careful not to get it on anything else at this point. Okay, in there I should have used a smaller brush. But we're okay. Afford to be a bit sloppy in there. Get me up there. Afford to get it on the boot, so there's no problem. Oh, I got it on the silver, of course, I did. All right, flip it over, get the inside of it. Doesn't go all the way up now. There is a saddle on the horse, so it doesn't go all the way up and over. I mean, it does, but it goes underneath the saddle. And it goes up here. Behind that bit of is it Bardin? I'm gonna call it Bardin. Mm, I'm gonna have to change a smaller brush. Don't believe I can get in there. Pick up my size one. Oh, excuse me. So I'm gonna get 
in there nice and easy. We're gonna run along that edge. Yep. And we're gonna come across here. I totally missed this picking it back out with Grace here. Do beg your pardon, that is my stomach if you can hear that. It's been uh, very talkative tonight. Do the underneath of that. Get the inside. The bottom of there where I missed. All right, I'm going to switch back to the bigger brush for the cloak. I'm going to start just here, come down in that recess. Get in that hole. Make sure all them crevices are. Filled. And then pick out the top. Be very careful not to get it on anything else. You got both sides of the cape, remember. So you got the inside as well as the outside that you can see. <clears throat> so with contrast, I have found if you start an area like this cape you have to finish it because if you took paint on it then come back to it after it's started to dry it leaves a tide mark and it looks absolutely awful and you could say to me well it already looks awful because my painting's not great but it looks horrendous. So try and work with your contrast paint while it's still wet. As much as you can. Definitely wouldn't leave it over a, a painting session. So don't splodge a bit of paint just to remind you that's going to be red and then come back to it the next day or in an hour or two because it, it's going to leave a horrendous tide mark and whatever you do to it it's just not going to look right Inside the cape. Can't see anything there.
it's got to come from this side so I'm gonna to have to carefully carefully go like that carefully get up in there come up in there as well I think that is as good as it's going to get. I can't get anywhere else. Now I can't really see many, I can see white bits right at the back there, but unless you pick it up and like properly inspect it like, hmm, hmm, I, I think we'll be okay. So that is our uh, red done, our red cloth done. What else have we got in here? We got some boots there that need picking out and pick them out with some wildwood if I can find the wildwood just so so contrast again Ooh, focus there we go contrast wildwood I'm gonna pick out the leather parts so boots belts things like that straps that you want a nice deep dark brown. I must say wildwood is one of my favourite colours out of the contrast range. I do apologise, that is my stomach going crazy. And where it meets the red, I'm not gonna go well I am, I'm gonna go all the way up to it. Hopefully it doesn't bleed across at the uh, colours mixing. So yeah, go across the whole model, picking out all the bits that you want in leather. Hit them with the wildwood. I'm going to, like I say, go with boots, belts, straps, bits and pieces like that. Um, yeah, get that bit as well as a strap. Yeah, there you go. So now we have all of our base coats done on the bits we want. We've got the red, we've got the silver, we've got the leather, we've got the gold. I am going to hit it with a wash of Targor Red Shade, if I can find it. Because I'm really good at losing things at the minute. Targo Rage Shade Rage 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 Where is the Targo? There we go. Finding in plain sight. We've got the Targo Rage Rage Shade. Blah. Words. So we are going to go over everything with this. All the metal, all the red. Uh, all the gold, all the leather, we're going to hit everything. We're gonna, not going to let it pull in places, but we're going to hit everything with it. Everything. We've got the saddle, we've got the cloth going over the saddle, we've got the boots, straps, anything that we've painted so far is going to get a wash of Targor Rage Shade. Again, not letting it pull anywhere. Try and keep it moving. Nice and let it settle in the recesses, but we don't want it excessively setting anywhere. And there, there is a bit heavy. Don't forget you got both sides of the chain mail. The inside and the outside. There were straps on the horse just there. Sorry, just realised I'm out of camera. You've got this bit here. Armour on the horse's head. You've got the chain. You've got... What else have we got? Straps under there, look. Get them. And that little one just there. 
both sides of that chain. So go over everything. Doesn't matter at this point if you're a bit messy as well. Because this is still a long way off from we can we can tidy bits up as well as we go. So our wash has dried now. Um, it's pulled a little bit in the back of the cape here, just around them crevices, but that's not too much of a problem. We can sort that out and it's gonna be in the recesses anyway, but it's looking all right. But what we are gonna do now is go over it all again, uh, all the bits that we've just gone over with Agrax Earthshade. Um, yeah, give it, a wash with this just the same as before just pick a piece and go over it start up here on this armor panel work my way around Yeah, try to be neat with this, but don't worry too much if it goes over. And don't let it pull too excessively in places. <laughs> I've found working with these, if you start in one place like the armor on the horse then continue going around on the armor on the horse until it's all done and then move on to the, the next bit this the, the the washers are a little bit more forgiving than contrast you don't really want to let them sit um, like halfway through an armor panel, washing an armor panel, and then take a break and then come back to it because you still get the tide marks. So you don't really want to be doing that. But it's a little bit, bit more forgiving than the uh, contrast paints are. So work your way around, get everything that you've done previously all the leather, all the metallics, everything, and uh, we'll be back in a moment. So now that Agrax Earthshade has nicely dried, um, we are going to dry brush the silver. And what I'm going to use for this is a really cheap, nasty, but soft bristled makeup brush. I think there was like a tenner for a whole packet of I don't know, 10, 20 different size makeup brushes from um, Amazon. Yeah, that one. Uh, so, got some lead belcher. Going to just lightly dry brush across the silver armor panels, hoping to pick out the uh, majority of it. So, Got a dollop of paint on the brush there. Just gonna wipe it off, work it into the bristles. So it's hardly leaving anything behind. It's probably a little bit too much there. Something like that. And then take the model, uh, and then we're just gonna lightly go across chainmail. This bit here and see how it, pick it picks out the edge just there. Across this, I'm using this small brush to avoid the gold. Just gonna dry brush across that. Get 
get up in there. It's not too much of a problem if it does get in the gold. Just try actively not to put it onto the gold. Start to run out a bit, so I'll get some off the tissue, wipe it again, get it back on there. Get this chain. Get this chain. This head piece of armor here, and there, you need a touch more on the brush, Just put some more on the tissue, work it into the bristles, take it off. So we can. Get that bit, get that bit, make sure we got that bit. And then touch on there, not getting the lever there. Get up here on this breastplate and the chain. Now I'm not gonna be able to avoid that skull, but that's not a problem. Um, and A touch get on the top of there it's got the red a bit there but that's all right we'll touch that up afterwards So moving on to the gold, I'm going to use the uh, Pro Acryl Rich Gold again and just going to dry brush that as well. Um, same method as before, same brush as before, nice and small. Get some on my brush, work it into the bristles. And I'm going to carefully just touch on these because I don't want it too bright. I'm only picking out the high edges like that. Just catch the edges again if it goes onto the silver it's not too much of a problem because they're very similar just adds to the whole aesthetic carefully just get that one and then any other gold bits you retouch up that with a bit of gold. There we go. Probably about to have a bit of a gold now. And then what we can do is take some of the Pro Acryl Silver um, and do the same with that. We're just going to just this is very bright, so we want a tiny, tiny uh, dry brush for this. Get some on your brush. Work into the bristles. I haven't cleaned this brush, it's still dry. Work into the bristles. And then we can just go over everything. See, that? that's caught that quite nicely, but it's very bright, so we don't want to go too much. Do 
there we go very sparingly just on the edges of the edges get that line and the face if you want to pick out the face you can go a little bit heavier there but you're doing this on all your metallics I forgot where it was A little bit more on my brush. Could use a bigger brush for this, but I feel like it'll be too much. And there we are. Metallic's done. On to the next bit. So now we've done the uh, dry brushing of the silver, we are going to take some Evil Sun Scarlet. There we go, focus. There we go. And we're just going to touch up the red. Do we want to use Evil Suns? Might just... Right, no. What we're actually going to do... We're going to use that in a minute. We're going to do Mephisto on red first just to uh, tidy up the edges and bring up some of the highlights back on the red cloth. Um, yeah, that's going to be a better idea, I think. So, get that. Just like where we've gone over a little bit with the silver, I'm just going to touch that up. Almost edge highlighting it. Not going over the top with this. Just pick up the prominent folds and bits that are going to stand out. Like that. Put on the silver there. Oh no. I think we got it. There we go. Tied it up. So that's the extent of it. What we're going to uh, re highlight back up. Same on this side as well, same on the cloak, same on any other red bits, uh, like the um, some of the reins, just pick them out, and then we go forward from there. So now the uh, we've highlighted the cape, we've highlighted the red bits, uh, we, we are now going to take Oh dear, excuse me. Uh, we are now going to take the Evil Sun Scarlet and do the same again, just on the very sharpest edges though. Take a little bit of that. So we're going to come like that. Oh, and then we're going to hit that bit, hopefully. Yeah. And we're going to hit there. That bit, just prominent bits to help stand out. So that that is it, really. Get sharpest edges. And on the 
cape we're going to get this bit here because that's going to be quite prominent. This edge. Uh, they're not sharp edges, but they are going to be quite prominent on the uh, the model. So we're going to get them bits, and then of course we need that little flick. Both sides of it. Too much of a brush. Uh, right. We're going to hit that a bit. That bit. I think that will do. Yeah, that will do for our red, red bits. So, put that away. What we can do next is take some Skeleton Horde contrast paint. There we go. And hit the bony bits. <clears throat> so, we've got quite a few bony bits. So, take your time, go around check them all out, get them all nicely shaded, give them a coat of this skeleton hard. So any skulls I've dotted around the model, I'm going to hit his horns with it, like that. All four of them. Uh, the, the helmet for the, um, the horse itself. Yeah, go around any bony bits that you want, hit them with a the skeleton hold. So now that's our, um, uh, what is it called? Skeleton hold is done. We're going to take some wildwood, contrast wildwood, and we're going to go over all of the horse, all the hair, the hooves. The, the, the skin, everything. Now, there is quite a lot of this, but there isn't a great deal showing. So we're going to carefully, if it goes on the straps and things, it's not a problem. But we're going to carefully go around the armour, get it layered up like that. I definitely recommend picking one bit and doing that bit all around. So I'm started on this leg. I'm going to do everything on this leg first. Working into the hair. Could probably do with a slightly bigger brush, but it'll be okay. If you do make a mistake, just go over it again or let it dry first and then go over it again with the original colour. So now the uh, wild wood is drying. Uh, we're going to leave that for the minute and I'm going to go round with, there we go, Griff Charger Grey and I'm going to hit these little stone trinkets. There's a couple of them, three of them on this one. Um, yeah, do that. Just carefully get in there. Just like that. Just 
just like that. Uh, now, while I've got that done, uh, I'm going to take some Gulliman Fresh. Gulliman Flesh. I need to get the two hands hanging off the back of the horse. We'll make them suitably gory in a minute. Once that's dried, get a nice base colour on them first. Two sides, don't forget the inside as well. Because you can't see it very well, but you can see it. Uh, this guy hasn't got any flesh exposed, so not worry about that. Uh, the musician does. You could just see their uh, mouth and their chin. So get that with that. Um, what I am going to do is take some yeah, Black Legion and I'm going to get the, um, the lance, the pole on the lance. My chair is really creaky tonight. So just going to carefully get all of that. So now I've got the weapon half done and the um um what colour is that? Wildwood on the hooves have, has dried. I am gonna carefully pick out go around Black Legion still, still the same paint, um and pick out the hooves. Careful not to get it on any of the hair or the um horseshoe. And if you do get it on the hair, it's not going to matter too much because you can't see all the detail down there. Or it's not going to matter too much, it's just going to look like it's blending in with the horseshoe. So there you go. Right now the, um, the hair is dried, what I'm going to do is take some non-oil uh, Yeah, take some non-oil and go over all the hair on the horse So I'm going to use a slightly bigger brush for this because there's a bit more hair But get my brush loaded up and then just carefully wash over all the hair. Again, doesn't matter too much if you get it on the, the skin, but try not to. So we got on all four of the legs, got the tail. There's a bit of a, a mane. So you got them legs, you got your tail obviously. Work that into the recesses there.
don't let it pull. If it starts pulling anywhere, move it away, move it around. So we've got the four legs, and then we've got little tufty bits up here. Just up here, look. Just like that. Uh, we're about there. And we've got the other two legs. So we can almost call this done. We've got a few straps here and there. So we'll take our uh, wild wood again. That's the colour that we used previously. Take our wild wood and uh, get that strap there. Something like that. Uh, da -da -da -da. I think that's all the straps I missed to be honest. So we got his belt. Let's get his belt. Now I got it previously, but it got a bit of silver on it from the dry brush. So just tidy that back up. And what I am gonna do is where am I gonna put that non oil? Uh out there. Don't need the non oil. I want some Agrax Earth Shade, I do believe. There we go, some Earth Shade. Take some Agrax Earth Shade. And what I'm going to do with this is just get the some of the horns. So, like on the shield, just going to get that. Oh, a bit like that, something might be a bit dark. A bit too much on them. Just take that off with a big brush. But yeah, just change the tone a little bit on the horns. And do the same on here. Do like half of it. And same on these as well. Do about half of it. These ones, about half of it again. And there we have it. All done, ready to go. So we'll finish off the base, uh, same way as normal. We'll uh, I'm not going to do this call first. Uh, right, where is Doom Ball Brown? That is our first colour for the base. So we have our Doom Ball Brown. And we're just going to go to town on the base. Cover the whole thing. Water it down a bit so it flows nice and easy into the sand. And get it all covered. Got any skulls on there? Go around them nicely. Paintball's closed. Good. 
doesn't matter too much if they get the, the skulls get any paint on them because uh, we're gonna paint them different in a minute anyway we're gonna paint them uh, with what is it skeleton horde but we can touch them back up with grace here so yeah get all that done so here we have the completed Chaos Knights. Um, they took a little bit longer than anticipated, but still enjoyed them. Um, yeah, you can use any of the techniques shown in here to paint any of your Chaos Knights or your Chaos Warriors. I'm going to use pretty much the same technique on the Chaos Warriors. Um, I think I'm going to do them next. Obviously, it can take a bit more time to do some more highlights and get some... Uh, better contrast going but I'm pretty pleased with these and how they turned out we've got a, a good tabletop standard so yeah hope you enjoyed this one and see you next time